Okay, so in this video, we're going to focus on the first part of gene expression, which is transcription. But before we jump into that, uh, I want to make sure that we cover the fact that this process that we call gene expression is actually made up of two main phases. So gene expression, the first part the f is two things. The first part is called transcription, and that's what we're going to be going over in this video, transcription. And in transcription, you, uh, the, your cell is taking the DNA and making a copy of it as messenger RNA. So you start with DNA and you make a copy of it and the copy is in the form of a molecule called messenger RNA. And because you're starting out with DNA, this whole process has to happen in the nucleus because the nucleus is where the DNA is, is located. So this whole s step of transcription is gonna happen in the nucleus of your cells. The second part of gene expression is called translation. And translation, uh, we'll do it in another video, but translation is where you take the messenger RNA and you use some other molecules and you take the information in the messenger RNA and you decode it into a protein, which is a chain of amino acids hooked together in the right order. And this happens at a ribosome and the ribosomes are all out in the cytoplasm of the cell. So the whole shebang, the whole process is called gene expression. The first um, component is transcription and the second component is translation. And what we're gonna do right now is focus on this part. Okay, so flip the slides here. So transcription. Because transcription is the process by which we go from a DNA and we copy it into a piece of mRNA, this is where this is going to happen is in the cell's nucleus because that's where the DNA is. And you got to go to where it is. The DNA can't get out of there. So this whole process is going to occur inside the nucleus of the cell. Um, on this diagram, the purple that you see here, this is the DNA. Uh, so you can see they've kind of unwound a little bubble in the middle, but this, this purple helix is the DNA strand in the nucleus. Now remember, in the DNA in the nucleus, there are 46 chromosomes, so there's 46 individual pieces of DNA. And so let's we'll backtrack a little bit here. Let's say in this example, we are going to follow through how your body makes a molecule of, for example, hemoglobin, because hemoglobin is a protein. So what we've got to do is find the instructions, the gene for hemoglobin. Um, and so the first thing your cell has to do is realize, okay, I need to make some hemoglobin. Then it has to go and find the recipe for hemoglobin, which is a specific gene, like a specific chunk of nucleotides on one of those 46 chromosomes. Now, how exactly your cell is able to pinpoint the hemoglobin gene when it needs it and not accidentally do the collagen gene or the insulin gene or something else. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother course. <laughs> uh, very, very complicated. We're starting to understand that more and more and more how that happens, but it is very, very technical and scientists are still working on that question. But somehow your body knows exactly which of the 46 chromosomes has the recipe for hemoglobin on it and where on the on the whole chromosome it is. Like, is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Your cell just kind of figures that out and knows knows where that is. So it's like opening the finding the right volume of the encyclopedia and opening it to the right page for hemoglobin. And wherever that hemoglobin instructions are, you're going to pry apart the chromosome at that spot. And this is what you see happening right here in this diagram is we found the uh, portion of the DNA that has the instructions for, for example, if we wanted to make hemoglobin, hemoglobin on it. And we've pried apart the two sides of the double helix through here. So the DNA is now kind of unpaired and you can see the base pairs are kind of like dangling in the breeze instead of being paired up with the other side like they usually are. 
Then we're going to use an enzyme called RNA polymerase. Okay, RNA polymerase. Now, this is an enzyme, it ends in A's, all right? It makes a polymer, which is a long chain, and the long chain specifically is RNA. So the name is very descriptive. RNA polymerase is the enzyme that creates or builds RNA. And we already learned a little bit about RNA early in this unit. It's a chain of nucleotides, um, but slightly different to DNA because it has a different sugar down its backbone, and it uses U's instead of T's when you put it together. And so what this RNA polymerase enzyme is able to do is once the part of the uh, chromosome has been located where the instructions that we need are, the RNA polymerase is able to um, attach to the helix, pry it apart, and then start to build RNA. And the RNA here has the dark blue back, uh, backbone and make a piece of RNA that lines up with the DNA that's in the chromosome. So here we got the purple piece that I'm highlighting right now is the DNA, and you can see it's got A, G, C, T, T, C, right, it keeps going. And my RNA polymerase, which is this big red circle right here, this RNA polymerase is building along and it's gonna add another piece here, which is gonna be an A to match with that T, and it's gonna add one here, which will be a G, and then it'll add a C. And as it keeps going, it's going to unwind some more here and open it up and keep building. And what we're creating is this strand of messenger RNA, which has been put together by the RNA polymerase 2 enzyme. Uh, and it lines up exactly with the template DNA. You see here it's uh, pairing up the bases properly. All right, now over here it says synthesis of RNA is, and what this is asking for you to identify is the direction that we're going. So we're adding on once again to a three prime end. Uh, so we're going five prime to three prime because that's the only way we can build. We're gonna build, 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 right? And the RNA nucleotides, the pieces that we're using to build this new chain, these things with the dark blue background, backbone, uh, they contain the, the sugar ribose instead of deoxyribose. And you end up, uh, as, the, as the RNA polymerase enzyme chugs along down here and pairs and pairs, pairs up, pairs up, pairs up and builds a new strand, the DNA zippers up behind it. So here's the DNA zippering back up and the messenger RNA just kind of flops out to the side the RNA polymerase will keep going all the way along until it comes to the end of the instructions. And it can sense where the end of the instructions are. We'll talk about that on the next slide. And then the, once it's got past the end of the instructions, the enzyme will fall off. Everything, the DNA will zip back up and then you'll have a separate piece of RNA made on the side. But the piece of RNA that you just made is matched up to the DNA that you copied it from. All right, so I'm going to skip to the next slide here. Um, so once again, we've got the DNA, and on here it's shown as these train tracks in the, in the blue. That's the DNA of the chromosome, and the gene we're interested in is bracketed here. So this is the DNA of the gene that we, of hemoglobin, the instructions for hemoglobin. Uh, all genes have, up ahead of them, before, before them in the, in, the, in the sequence, something called a promoter. And the promoter is like the um, introduction and it says to, this, to the enzyme, hey enzyme, this is the instructions for hemoglobin. The hemoglobin instructions are gonna start now. They're gonna start right here. And they tell the RNA and polymerase enzyme where to stick on and where to pry apart the chromosome so where it can start pairing up. So it's like, in a recipe book. At the beginning of the recipe book, it gives you a bit of information like this recipe is for chocolate chip cookies. It makes 12 cookies and there's this many calories in them. And there might be some information about they store well, you can put them in the freezer or whatever. <laughs> That's the kind of introductory piece about the enzyme. And then you get into the actual instructions. And that's what the promoter is. It's a sequence on the DNA. So there's special bases here 
that are recognized to mark the beginning of the gene. One, one, one very common one is the Tata box. It goes T-A-T-A. So specifically, you see what's called a Tata box. Um, and so this would be a bunch of letters, T-A-T-A, -A, and then a bunch more letters. And that would tell the RNA polymerase enzyme that the, that the gene is about to start, the instructions are about to start. The RNA polymerase enzyme, as you can see, is stuck to the promoter. It's starting to pry apart the DNA and then build the RNA piece to match the DNA sequence. And it just chugs along in this direction all the way along, prying apart the DNA as it goes, pairing up and building, pairing up along here and building a new strand. The DNA zippers up behind it, which you can see it doing here. And the RNA that just was built, brand new, fresh, is just kind of tailing off. E eventually, the uh, enzyme will get to a sequence on the DNA called the terminator. And the terminator is where the enzyme knows to stop copying the uh, sequence. And so when we get to the terminator sequence, the RNA polymerase will fall off of the uh, template. The DNA will zipper itself back up together. It's not been changed. It's not been harmed by this whole process. The enzyme can be reused if we need it. It'll just go away and hang around the cell. And here's our completed piece of RNA. It's in the pink here, and you can see it was made from the five to three direction. And this is what we're gonna call the messenger RNA. All right, so in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about what happens to this piece of um, mRNA next, but this is the general process of transcription.